morning everybody Todd Metalhead weatherman here urgent weather update coming for you guys we have a very significant weather situation expected today we have a moderate risk that includes Oklahoma City Tulsa Fort Sill Woodward Oklahoma even involved in this and then this even goes into southern Kansas where we have Greensburg and Wichita in there once more there's an enhanced risk that stretches all the way into parts of Missouri so we've Joplin Kansas City in there as well Wichita Falls is on the edge of that and then we even have Lincoln Nebraska unfortunately back under the gun once again this threat is for all three hazards but the main threats are actually tornadoes and hail here we have a 15 percent hatch risk for tornadoes so there's a good chance we could potentially see strong to violent tornadoes if parameters verify as they are right now then our hail threat is at a 45% right now. So gorilla hail, as a lot of storm chasers will call it, or really big hail, is basically up to about maybe I would say close to softball size or, or bigger is possible today. It seems maybe even likely at this point. We'll have to see how things pan out with that. And then also the wind threat can't be slept on either with a 30% hatch risk towards the eastern side of our threat area here. So again, Kansas City, Joplin, Tulsa, pretty much uh, Topeka, and also even Lincoln is in that 30% hatch risk for wind. So I think what we'll end up seeing today, and I don't know why I'm on the 850, I want it to be on the 500, but what we can see here for now, this is our trough here, this is going to be our catalyst for our severe weather today, and it looks like we end up seeing stormy initiation around four o'clock central time and it really starts to pick up from that point i would say maybe give or take a couple of hours just in case because when we get to these kinds of situations now casting becomes more and more prevalent so we could maybe see an even earlier start time than what i'm talking about right now so pretty much from 2 p.m all the way into the overnight hours we could begin to see severe weather pop up Again, like I said before, overnight threat seems pretty likely at this point before these storms will eventually start to die down. And then, of course, there's even risk for the days after that, which we'll get into a little bit later. So then we go to the 700 here. And there's a couple things I want you to make note of. Winds are really strong at the 500 millibar height of the atmosphere. We go to the 700. You can see not only strong winds here, but also turning of the winds with height. Because as this trough is moving in, you can see these wind barbs are starting to move. At times, you can even see that flow kind of shifting from southwest to northeast all the way to north to south at times. So that's two different levels where we have not only speed shear, but directional shear. That's two things that you would look for with tornado genesis, not to mention evidence of our short waves here, which are these little ripples within the isobars or contour lines and you can see that being pretty prevalent across this entire severe weather area so we have a really strong short wave we have a really strong wind profile so already starting to tick the boxes here and then of course as we get later into the evening especially as we get towards sunset where that low level jet really starts to ramp up here we get that classic north to south or south to north flow excuse me from the Gulf of Mexico here. So with this, not only are we gonna have a very rich moist air mass here, we also end up having really strong winds coming from the south here. Another point of directional shear and speed shear. So again, the threat for tornadoes, some strong ones is definitely on the table here at this point. So with that in mind, now let's go ahead and take a look at the dew points here dew points as i mentioned before are going to be rich no real surprises there this is something that we've been talking about a bit here we talked about the wind profile with this system i do think that for the most part the most uns the most moist part of the air mass is going to mainly be over towards eastern o eastern oklahoma east Cent and uh, central oklahoma as well as parts of south and southeastern kansas here we do get those 60 degree plus dew points over towards Omaha and Lincoln as well, and even sneaking its way into South Dakota, 
Eventually, we even have to look at areas like Kansas City, maybe even parts of Iowa coming into the mix as well. So, like I said, I do think we have multiple areas of interest in regards to the severe weather threat, also including tornadoes here. Could maybe even see a secondary moderate risk pop up, possibly. I wouldn't rule it out, but I do think the most favorable area is still going to be towards central Oklahoma and Kansas, of course. But that's what we have going on with our moisture here. We'll go ahead and sneak over to our precipitable water so that way we can kind of get an idea of what supercells could be possible today. Particularly our supercell types, I'm thinking for the most part, are going to mostly be high precipitation due to the amount of precipitable water we have available. See large areas right here where we have that PW here, precipitable water as it's called close to 1 1.6, 1.5, 1.4, 1.3. The, the uh, higher the number is from one inch as in a PW here, usually has a much higher probability of producing high precipitation cells. So it's not really surprised considering the kind of air mass that we're gonna end up having over this area. But just in case anyone gets a brave idea to chase today, I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you are a professional. If you aren't, stay away. So with that in mind here, let's go ahead and take a look at some of our severe parameters as well. Not to, not to anyone's real surprise here, but we are going to be looking at a very unstable environment for severe weather. One of the most unstable environments we've seen this year and we're seeing up to about 4,000 joules per kilogram just to the south of Oklahoma City here. So again, definitely looking like we have all the makings for a very dangerous severe weather outbreak here. And this is getting towards peak time, which would be about eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central here. And some of the richest Cape actually ends up popping up a little bit after sunset here. Seeing 4,200s, maybe even a little bit more than that. We'll actually go ahead and take a look at the sounding here. It's going to be like right on the edge of the dry line and boom, there you go. Look at that. Those are some impressive numbers here. The wind shear is incredible at all levels of the atmosphere. We're almost at a 95 on wind shear at the surface to 8. So strong, long-lived, powerful supercells likely. Strong to violent tornadoes possible with that. Significant tornado parameter here is maxed out. And then all on top of that, we have our zero to three loop here on our hodiograph. Look as, ugh, geez, wow. Just looking at this kind of intimidating a little bit, but looking at our zero to three here, our loop is really impressive going from 20 to 50 knots from our zero to one here. Usually when you see something like this on the hodiograph, that is a sign of trouble. If you know, thunderstorms are going to be in that area. Our lifted index is insane, well above negative 10 even, or the integer greater than negative 10 on everything, which is crazy. As I mentioned before, instability is unbelievable right now. Just wow. This could be a pretty intense day if things do verify. There aren't too many fail parameters with this either, so like I said, I'm I'm concerned about it, but of course we'll be here to cover as much of this as we can. We're gonna, I'm gonna try and do everything I can to get work done as fast as possible here. So no real need to talk about anything further on the wind shear here. Let's just go ahead and take a look at what our significant tornado parameter is and we'll, I'll get out you guys' hair. But still fact in the matter is just, this is not a day to mess around you can see by the time we get into 23, we have ridiculous numbers here. We're gonna take a, we did a sounding out of Oklahoma. We're doing one out of Kansas now. And if we look at this, there we go. Is it really a surprise considering all the parameters to me? Not really, but still just shows how palpable and how widespread this threat actually is. I would almost even go as far as to say that this looks more and more like a rain wrapped supercell here that would occur towards kansas so again definitely not a day to be messing around when it comes to the weather make sure you're staying weather aware don't go out looking for these jokers don't go out looking for the storm chasers 
because there is a chance that if you are looking for the tornado, you are high, it's actually highly likely, likely, it's highly likely that you aren't going to see it. My goodness, numbers on here are ridiculous. So I would not be surprised again to say that there's a chance for a high risk, and then the numbers continue to go up. Like I said, peak time would probably be about eight or nine o'clock. I would say. And you can see the numbers again, 9.3, unbelievable. I think this is one of the same areas that we were looking at before. Like I said, do not mess around today, folks. Not something to play with at all. So last thing we're gonna do is take a look at what our simulated radar looks like and we're getting out of here. Again, like I mentioned before. So again, I'm asking, almost pleading with you, honestly, which I really don't even like doing, in saying that if you happen to live over towards these areas in Oklahoma, make sure you are staying weather aware. It's the best thing you can do for yourself, for your loved ones, and also the emergency responders too. In any case here, looks like we even get an earlier start time than what some of the wind profiles were showing us again, like I mentioned before. So we could have an as early as a start it's about maybe two o'clock, maybe one, two o'clock, but the real peak time is going to be about three or four o'clock for initiation. Then after that point, it's just gonna really ramp up from that point. Again, I do think some prefrontal cells are possible over here towards Nebraska, as well as parts of South Dakota and Iowa. So I think that's where things are gonna start. And then we end up picking up over here towards Kansas and Oklahoma. And again, like I said, this threat does look like it has the potential to last into the overnight here. So like I said, we'll cover as much of this as we can because I do have a day job that I work. So I'm not gonna be able to cover all of this, unfortunately. I'm gonna do the best that I can here to keep everyone safe. But in any case though, you guys stay weather aware, stay safe. I will see you guys later this afternoon. That is a fact though. But until then, it's been Tyre Metalhead Weatherman. You guys take care and have a safe, and well-prepared rest of your day.